35. There's the tornado warning right there. So let's read and see what we've got from this. Just give me a second. All right, tornado warning is in effect for, as you see, the northwestern parts of Henderson and the southernmost portion of Kaufman County until 745. According to the Weather Service, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located seven miles west of Seven Points or 12 miles west of Gun Barrel City moving east at 30. So this is the storm that we're looking at right now. As the storm makes its way off toward the east, it's moving east at 30. So let's put a path on that again. We just want to make sure. Again, this is a thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado, not a tornado on the ground. So it's indicating seven points at 733. So you need to be in your tornado safe spot as we speak, Gun Barrel City. Make plans to do that very, very quickly. Maybank as well. Eustis, you've got a little bit of time yet, but Pickens at 808, you certainly have a little more time. Um, is that you're actually outside of that tornado warning right now? But again, we'll look using the radial velocity scan. There certainly is some rotation. You can see the little community of sticks in southern sections of um, Kaufman County. It's just south of there, but we do have rotation crossing the Trinity, or looks like it has already crossed the Trinity River. There is the rotation right there. It's moving to the east at 35 miles per hour. So residents of Seven Points, um, Gun Barrel City, Toole, Tolosa, I'm, I don't I'm, that's never know that I'm not going to try to say the name of a city. Um, Sticks also just north of this possible tornado and Maybank. This entire area is in the warning right now. So if we look once again at the radar, current radar, the storm just doesn't look that big. But there is certainly rotation being indicated by the National Weather Service radar out of Fort Worth. They're showing broad rotation, but it has been tightening a bit. And you just saw there the last little bit of rotation looks like it's not quite as impressive or dangerous as it was a minute ago but there is rotation in this in this system so we have to follow it for you to make sure that everybody remains safe western parts of Henderson County southern Kaufman uh, let's see so looking for another one in the Dallas Ellis Kaufman County area we could be looking at another cell that could be producing um, some rotation. And I see that right in there. So we're going to have to watch both of these areas. But the one that has the tornado warning on it right now is the, uh, the cell that's moving into the westernmost portion of Henderson County. Could move into the southern areas of Kaufman County, but right now it looks like it should stay south of Kaufman County. Across the Trinity River, so residents of Toole, Gun Barrel City, Seven Points, you should be in a tornado safe spot as we speak as the storm continues to move off toward the east at 30 miles per hour. So let's put a path on this from the latest radial velocity scan that we have here. Moving east at 30, there we go. So 7.733, that's very soon. So get to that tornado safe spot. Tool, probably in about 17, 18 minutes from now. Maybank, 747. Houston, Houston, 757. But Eustace, you're outside of the tornado warning at this point. But if it holds together, it could be in your area soon. Pickens, it's shortly after the top of the hour. So... Let's go ahead and we're going to put radar back on this for you so you can see how things are kind of moving. And again, the storm looked stronger when it was near Ennis, but it has weakened somewhat, at least from, you know, what we're looking at. But you can see that inflow notch right there. So this is certainly a storm that is uh, strong enough to uh, produce, a, I mean, at least a possible tornado. And that's what the National Weather Service is indicating to us. 
So I'm actually, Cody, I'm wondering if it's this area here or maybe one down here. Right now, it looks like be... it should be that area to the north. Yeah. I, it was a lot easier to see the last scan. Um, right. It almost looks like the storm might just be kind of falling in on itself, and its death throes maybe just getting that last little cycle in. But um, from the last scan of this one, I'd say it's that little area just to the north of the Henderson County line. Right, right. And then, you know, we're also, you know, we're looking at possibly a little inflow notch here. So we yeah. might have a couple of areas of concern. Um you see, the National Weather Service just issued another severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Dallas, Ellis, and Kaufman County. Yeah, I think that's right along oh, that cold there's front. There's that big one right there. Yeah. Yeah, this is from the front that's actually moving through. This will be in effect until 815 as that line starts to kind of work its way in. And let's see what kind of speed we've got on these. They're moving off toward the east at 30 miles per hour. All right, so we'll just kind of take a quick look at this, then we'll go back to that tornado warning. So they're moving east at 30. Hey, Mark, we're about to get another tornado warning for eastern Van Zandt County near Grand Saline. All, right. All right. So we're going to move out here. All right, so if you need to call your wife, please do. Thank you. All right, so what we're looking at is the possibility of a second possible again these are possible tornadoes that could be coming up um, so according to the National Weather Service in Shreveport they are picking up something there very close to Grand Saline you can kind of see it right there in Grand Saline so we could be looking at a possible tornado there again these are right now, they're severe thunderstorm warnings with the potential for tornadoes. Uh, we're waiting to see if we get a warning for that one, if it was a, a tornado warning. Uh, it says it is coming for eastern Van Zandt near Grand Saline. So that'll be coming out very, very soon. Again, these are the Weather Service offices cooperating with one another using all the latest technology that they've got their hands on to help each other out, which is great news for us so that we can pass that information on to you. So again, there's that one possible tornado west of Gun Barrel City moving to the east at 30. And you can see here that again, Gun Barrel City, 739, Eustace, Eustace at 756. But we've got a new warning that should be coming out here very soon have not seen it yet. There it is. All right, so this is just for the northeastern parts of Van Zandt County and the far southern sections of Raines County. According to the National Weather Service, at 724, a thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located near Fruitvale or 10 miles northeast of Canton, moving east at 10 miles per hour. So moving very, very slowly. So let's look at this storm as it kind of works its way into Van Zandt County. So whatever's going on in there right now, it's moving very slowly at this point. So that warning again, just the northeastern parts of Van Zandt County, not including Canton, and the far southern portions of Raines County. Again, this is a tornado warning. It'll be in effect, um, let's see here, until 8.15 which is another 45 minutes or so. Instead of 724, again, located near Fruitvale or 10 miles northeast of Canton, moving east at 10 miles per hour. All right, so let's get back in here and get that description again. All right, we're going to put the radial velocity scan on here because I think it would be too difficult to see, yeah, the year it's getting very close to Grand Saline right now along Highway 80. I don't think I've ever tracked a storm moving east to 10, ever. <laughs> so Grand Saline, you need to be in your tornado safe spot. It appears that if this does indeed uh, get down to the ground, um, it would be very close to Grand Saline at this point, kind of heading along Highway 80 toward the east. Again, a very slow forward movement of this storm. 
according to the Weather Service, moving east at 10. It's to the northeast of Canton. And again, you can see that there certainly is some area of rotation there, the broad area of rotation right along Highway 80. Trying to see if we're getting any more info from the Weather Service on this. At least not at this point. Uh, again, we've got a weather watcher, Chris Bell in Grand Saline. Cody's, Cody lives in Grand Saline, so hopefully everybody that can hear us there in Grand Saline is in your tornado safe spot as we await this storm to move very slowly through the northeastern parts of Van Zandt County. Now, hopefully, if anything happens at all, it starts to speed up a bit or it weakens, to be perfectly honest with you. I'd rather that happen. But again, this is a very slow-moving storm. At least the, the tornadic part of the storm is moving to the east. And again, you can see there's an updated scan here, which would pretty much put this rotation right around Grand Saline. So if you got anybody in that area, just make sure that they are prepared in a tornado safe spot now so that um, in case this does drop down to the ground, they are prepared. Again, both of the weather service offices that kind of handle this area, this rotation is several thousand feet, about six, 7,000 feet in the atmosphere. So hopefully this is not reaching the ground, uh, but certainly enough rotation to cause both the National Weather Service in Fort Worth and Shreveport to work together to uh, kind of make sure that they have they know what's going on here since this is kind of an area of concern. Moving east to 10, though. Cody, have you ever remember, heard of one moving that slowly? No, not really. But, I mean, you can really see in these last two scans, I know these two cells are kind of interacting together a little bit, but you almost, right there, that inflow, if you look kind of between Grain Saline and Canton. Yeah. So it's certainly doing its best to wrap in. Um, so far, I haven't heard anything from too much action from my family in Grain Saline, which is good, but we still want to make sure that everyone is taking this very seriously. Yes, please do. Um, but uh, that, that's the problem with... with these areas because the rotation may look weak but it doesn't take a lot for it to tighten up just enough to reach down to the ground and you know we just want to make sure that y'all are taking all this stuff you know obviously very very seriously please do again possibility that we could have a tornado near grand saline and there's also the possibility that uh, we could have um, a tornado nearing gun barrel city so residents of gun barrel city right along you see there 274 um if this is indeed a tornado, uh, which is a thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado, there's Highway 274, uh, there's 334 near Gun Barrel City. You can see the 198 kind of wraps around. So just make sure that, that you are prepared. You are in a small windowless interior room at Tool, Gun Barrel City, Eustis, even in Log Cabin. Mm. Even though Eustis and Log Cabin are outside, of that uh, that area, that warning, you need to be prepared. So a train spotter, according to the weather service here in Fort Worth, is seeing rotation in a wall cloud on Highway 80 near Fruitvale. So that was a short time ago. So let's get back up to this cell here. So they said that they were seeing it near Fruitvale, which would indicate, I'm sure it's a little further to the east now, it says thunderstorms of um, out in East Texas are encountering an area of back surface winds more south more southeasterly than southerly, leading to higher low-level storm relative helicity or more increased rotation, and it also has an increased tornado threat, according to the National Weather Service out of Fort Worth. So that's why we're paying more attention to these. Again, we've got those two warnings, and the one that we had back for parts of Sabine County, that still remains a severe thunderstorm warning, which is good news that it's not a tornado warning, but still we could be looking at some continued nastiness there. So going back to the storm near Grand Saline, we still see that we've got rotation there along Highway 80, Grand Saline, and again looking uh, at the roadways kind of feeding into Grand Saline. We know that's Highway 110. 
So if you've got anybody in these areas, you need to make sure that they are prepared for some very nasty weather and the possibility of a tornado. So let's go back to the one that we had here earlier. The National Weather Service has kind of changed the overall look of this uh, polygon. So we're still looking at the possibility that we've got a tornado. Uh, but again, this is a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado over seven points or near Gun Barrel City moving east at 35. So let's go ahead and kind of, you can, you can see that there certainly is some kind of rotation between seven points and Gun Barrel City. And uh, again, that warning in effect until 745. So that's about another 12, 13 minutes or so. It's moving to the east at 35 miles per hour. So let's put a path on this. Moving east at 35. So Gun Barrel City, very soon, 738. Please be in your tornado safe spot. Eustace at 752. You have a little bit of time. You're outside of the warned area at this point. But you're looking at areas like Murkison at 818 and Brownsboro at 832. Well outside this warned area. Henderson County uh, spotters have reported dime-sized hail near seven points. So we are seeing some, some instability here. We're starting to see, you know, hail falling. So we could kind of check to see what the hail situation looks like here as well. Let's get up there. I need to grab my hail query. So again, that's a little bit over a half an inch in diameter on that hail around Gun Barrel City, seven points in Tool. So continue to be aware that you've also got the hail possibility. And the storm now near Grand Saline. Let's go back and see if we can't see the rotation. It says there's no confirmation of any rotating wall cloud or anything um, with that stuff near seven points, but they are looking, they are watching. Um, still not much of a change. And from what we're seeing in um, parts of northeastern Van Zandt County, a very, very, very slow-moving storm just right around Grand Saline moving east um, at 10 miles per hour. So it's not really going to do too much of anything moving east at 10. Um, west Mineola, it's at 827, but that's outside the warning right now. So we'll continue to watch all of this. As a matter of fact, I think it might be a good idea kind of back out and see what's happening in all of East Texas right now and put the radar back on so that we can see just what's happening out there. Again, some strong storms in the eastern parts of deep East Texas. We got a couple of tornado warnings, western Henderson and southeastern Kaufman, also northeastern Van Zant and southern Rains. And those are very small, severe tornado warned boxes because the storms are moving fairly slow. Um, as a matter of fact, the one in Van Zandt County was indicated that it was moving east at 10. But we want everybody to be safe. We have still some severe thunderstorm warnings for northwestern Smith and Wood County until 8 o'clock. The storm's there. Some quarter-size hail and 60-mile-per-hour winds. We've got that tornado warning for northeastern Van Zandt, southern uh, rains. That's in effect until 8.15. Storm there moving east at 10 miles per hour. Looking at a couple of warnings that we have uh, for parts of Kaufman. This is for central Kaufman County as that line of storms moves in. Severe thunderstorm warning until 815. Winds of 60 and half dollar size hail is a possibility. Then we have the tornado warning for western Henderson and southeastern Kaufman until 745. Again, the National Weather Service says this storm is moving east at 35. So if you're north of Athens, it's moving east at 35. So let's put a path on this. Let's see, where's 35? There's 35. So Eustis at 745, Murkison 810, Brownsboro 824, the Redland area at 835. So that's the front edge of the thunderstorm itself, but as we look as far as rotation for possible 
tornadoes. We do have, we still have an area of rotation now between Gun Barrel City and Tool. <clears throat> so this is actually showing a little more of the green in there. So we do have rotation still being indicated, but this is, remember, several thousand feet into the atmosphere. It may not be, and hopefully is not reaching the ground, but this is in being indicated that it's moving east at 35, so let's put a path on right on that little couplet there. Moving east at 35. Do I have enough room? No, I don't, so give me a second. I'm going to back out a little bit. Moving east at 35. So here are some of the... Now this is for a possible tornado. It's, it's radar indicated, but there is no ground truth that we're seeing. Continuing to monitor um, all of the chat rooms that we have our hands on. So Eustace at 752. So I would say just be ready to move if possible because you're outside of the warning at this point. Also Pickens, Murkison, Opelika, and Brownsboro all outside the warned area. If anything goes downstream, we'll certainly let you know. But right now between Gun Barrel City and Toole, there is some rotation being indicated. Now back to the storm. In the uh, northeastern quadrant of Van Zandt County, it looks like the storm has kind of made its way away from Grand Saline and now is kind of moving into areas between Grand Saline and Mineola. See if the Weather Service new tornado warning coming out for the rest of northern Henderson and southern Van Zandt County because of that warning we were just talking about. But we do have, again, rotation along Highway 80, now east of Grand Saline and west of Mineola. Uh, we don't have a warning issued yet for northwestern Smith or southwestern Wood County. That would be the Weather Service out of Shreveport, and we're hoping that we can see something from them here soon on this particular storm. But the, uh, <laughs> excuse me, we have a new tornado warning that should be coming out. Well, actually, it's a severe thunderstorm warning. Yeah, and I think they just threw on okay, that so tornado it's, tag. It's, uh, okay, so this is a severe thunderstorm warning for northern and eastern sections of Henderson and southern Van Zandt County. So, again, that's not a tornado warning. That is a severe thunderstorm warning for that part of that storm system that's moved into the western sections of Henderson. So, severe thunderstorm warning until 830. Storms are moving east at 40 miles per hour. Possibility of ping pong ball size hail and 65 mile per hour wind gusts are possible in this cell. So the movement is east at 40. So let's go right to the eastern edge, moving east at 40. So this is Eustis at 745, Murkison at 807, Brownsboro 819, Chandler at 830, Noonday at 837. Again, we're looking at uh, some strong gusty winds of 60 to 65 miles per hour. Also frequent lightning, some very heavy rain, and also the possibility that we could be looking at some uh, some hail. So let's check into that. You can see in the northern end of um, the lake there, we've got some hail. Only about uh, half an inch in diameter, maybe a little bit larger. But they've now extended that tornado warning as well. Uh, the one that for Henderson County. So let's now look at that. So a tornado warning for the northern portions of Henderson County until 8.30. According to the National Weather Service, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over Enchanted Oaks or near Gun Barrel City, moving east at 35. All right, moving east at 35. So let's get a radial velocity check of this. Yep, there it is. Uh, we want to get a better look at this. I apologize. All right, there it is. There it is. See, we're right, right along. Let's see. Looks like it's just southeast of Gun Barrel City, west of 
Eustace. And um, movement on this is to the east at 35. So let's get a path on this. It's right along, really right along 198. So moving east at 35. So Eustace, you need to be in a tornado safe spot now because it's within 10 minutes of your location. We want to make sure that you understand that, again, this is a tornado warning with a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. There hasn't been anything um, indicated on the ground um, in the northwestern parts of Henderson County, but Eustace, it could be near you at 751, Pickens at 8 o'clock, Merkison 816, Opelika 824, Brownsboro at 830. Now, Brownsboro, you're outside of the tornado warning, but you're not outside of the severe thunderstorm warning. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, so that's the latest on this um, new tornado warning and severe thunderstorm warning that's come out. You can see how that storm kind of quickly moves into that area just south of Gun Barrel City. So let's go back up to the, um, the storm that we've got in Van Zandt County and see what we've got here. See if we have anything new from the so, Weather Service. Nothing for that particular storm, but the latest scan, especially using Shreveport, um, it's a little easier to see, and we'll place it to the southeast of uh, Grand Saline right now. All right, so it has changed a little bit, indicating that we've got possible rotation now between Jones and Grand Saline, north of Pruitt. This is west of Mineola. It is showing that there is rotation there. Um, so according to the Weather Service, main circulation of the Henderson County storm is approaching Payne Springs at this time. So Payne Springs residents uh, need to be aware that the main part of this rotation is heading towards you. There is Payne Springs. There is the area of rotation. So we want everybody in Payne Springs, Eustace, um, Stockard, Pauline, Enchanted Oaks, just get into that tornado safe spot and stay there until we can clear you from it as we continue to watch all this for you. All right, so northeastern Van Zandt County, again, we were kind of concentrating on that one a moment ago. That tornado warning until 815 using the Shreveport radar. Got a better look. And again, folks, I want you to understand this is six or seven thousand feet up into the atmosphere where we have this rotation uh we don't have any ground truth that we've seen cody have you seen anything at all none and i've been jumping between the cc's and thankfully we're not seeing any sort of tornadic debris just yet um just right now broad rotation no confirms the last thing we even heard from this storm was a potential funnel cloud when it was uh, moving east of fruitvale um okay. but that is the last overall confirmation of anything that we've heard with this storm so far okay so we're hoping that this is staying aloft uh, but we do have the tornado warning for northeastern van zandt only now we also have a severe thunderstorm warning for wood and northwestern and north central smith county until eight o'clock storms continue to move off toward the east at between 40 and 45 miles per hour but that one little individual cell there in Van Zandt County, excuse me, really moving much slower, at least the uh, what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Yeah, and thankfully, uh, with their latest update, because you notice they kind of edged down that warning a bit, it looks like it's picked up a little bit more steam. It's now moving east at 25. So it'll be completely away from the Grand Saline area here very soon. But for our friends that are going to be close to you and especially live south of Mineola along Highway 80, keep in mind the storm is now moving a little faster, around 25 miles per hour. And that's why you've included in that severe thunderstorm warning because now the National Weather Service in Shreveport is watching that cell as well. Okay, so you said moving east at 25? Yes. All right. Now, again, remember, with all this said, this is rotation aloft. Yep. We've not had any confirmation at all of anything going on at the ground. Um, let's see here. Watching more of what's going on in the weather in the chat rooms here. So, Mineola, if this holds together, mm -hmm. um, again... This is rotational loft at 810. 
the Horde area at 824, Haynesville 829, and in the Fada area at 837. Again, that's outside of the Warren area right now. It's in, it is in the severe thunderstorm warning, however, and that warning's in effect until 8 o'clock with storms there moving to the east much faster at about 55 miles per hour. So, waiting for more scans, waiting for more information out of this Van Zandt County storm. Also continuing to monitor what's going on in Henderson County. And you can see that the rotation remains now between Gun Barrel City and Eustis. Weather Service indicates that this warning will be in effect until 8.30, and the storm is moving east at 35. Let's put a path on it now. This is just west of Eustis now, moving east at 35. So residents in Houston, Eustis, tornado safe spot now. It is time to do that for us. If this is indeed a tornado, we've got circulation. Uh, you need to be in that tornado safe spot as we speak. Places like Stockard, Murchison, Brownsboro, and Chandler further down the line, not so much because the storm is not quite there yet, but, but be prepared. Be ready just in case. <coughs> Excuse me, this does make it all the way down to the ground. Uh, but right as of this point, that's not the case. And this is, the warning is only for those northern parts of Henderson County. Athens, you're involved as well if this kind of takes a little more of a turn toward the right or toward the south it could be a little more of an issue so let's put radar back on here so that we can see what's going on but really starting to see that front catching up with these storms as it works its way into the northwestern parts of east texas right now if we turn the lightning off you can really see it kind of working its way in and again, once that line that you see, and I'm going to point to it for you here, so okay, just make you sure. Once this line passes your area, really the threat for severe weather will end. But right now, it's a, we've got a lot of folks that are going to have to deal with that first. And we're not really seeing a lot of development south of, say, just areas north of Waco, but we're, we're still kind of counting on this thing to really full circle here okay it looks like we've got some um, folks here near the Payne Springs and Chanted Oaks area reporting seeing some rotation but nothing worth talking about that is in quotes by the way so take that for what it's worth so again that's from the emergency manager there but still you know regardless if there was any rotation at all you know, you could see some damage, you know, some things thrown around here and there. But let's look at, uh, again, the one back in, in Henderson County. That one there. I will say the latest scan, it's a little bit easier to see. Yeah, you can see that right now, closer to yep. Eustis. Yep. So right around here, it's moving east at 35. So, again, if you're in Eustis, please... Your tornado safe spot is where you need to be right now. Again, we've got some roadways uh, between Malakoff. They're heading north on 198. You always got 175 from Athens through Pickens and Eustis and kind of heading on points northwest. Uh, we want everybody, again, to be prepared. Looks like if this holds together, it'll be crossing Highway 19 in about 20 minutes or so. But let's move this little bit further since we've got a new scan so Eustis it's on your doorstep if indeed this is a tornado which we have no indications right now that it is but if it is um, it's very close to where you are Murkison at 817 Brownsboro at 830 but Brownsboro Chandler you're outside of the uh, tornado warning but still within the severe thunderstorm warning area all right, let's clear this. We're going to go back up to Van Zandt County and see what we're seeing. Change radar scans. Not looking as dangerous as it did a few minutes ago, Cody. Which yeah, is I agree. Good news. But a tornado warning northeastern parts of Van Zandt County, it's still going to be in effect 
till 8.15 unless that is dropped by the National Weather Service in Fort Worth. Let me see if they're talking about that at all. Not at this point. But it doesn't look like it's quite as quite as nasty looking as it was a few minutes ago. So if we kind of put on our high resolution radar. Now it appears like it's weakening some. However, you can kind of see the eastern edge there. We could be looking at you know something right in here. So we don't want to completely drop our guard yet. But according to the National Weather Service, that warning will stay in effect for northeastern Van Zandt County until 8.15. Severe thunderstorm warning in effect for northern Smith and all of Wood County. And that, uh, that severe thunderstorm warning will remain in effect until 8 o'clock. So you can see really the northern end of uh, that, that line of storms there has really been pushing off toward the east very quickly. So again, northern Smith, all of Wood, storms are moving to the east at 55 miles per hour. So let's put a path on this portion here. East at 55. Wow. It's moving quickly, no doubt. So just look at these areas here, and you'll see uh, Gilmer at 816. Uh, you could be looking at Big Sandy at 819, Lone Star 833, Harleton 843. The, the Horde area, the Horde area at 754. So it's really moving along very quickly and uh, very gusty winds. Let's check to see if we've got any uh, hail to speak of in Wood County. Not seeing much at all, which is really good news. I know that's a big hail scope, but we really wanted to kind of check a large area. So some, I'd say maybe... Uh, nickel size hail, maybe at the largest that we've got going through areas just kind of east of Mineola, but we don't really have anything um, anything major there. So severe thunderstorm warning still for parts of Sabine. I think that's getting ready to move out into Louisiana. So that's good news. Crossing over Toledo Bend right now. But that severe thunderstorm warning uh, for Sabine Parish and Sabine County until 8.15. Sorry about that. I just touched my microphone. Um, so we'll kind of keep our eye on that just to make sure that nothing happens before it exits Sabine County. But two, two tornado warnings still for northeastern Van Zandt County. I think they're going to let that one expire. Um, are you seeing that from Fort Worth, Cody? Yeah. Um, I haven't seen anything corroborating that yet. Okay. So the tornado warning for northeastern Van Zandt County until 815. It really looks like um, this is kind of dying away, though. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're not seeing any remnant. Maybe some strong winds for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, but that's, you know, going to easily slide into where that severe thunderstorm warning is. Um, right. And to, to build more on that use of storm, uh, we have gotten reports of some, some high winds, um, but so far no rotation spotted just yet. All right, so you can see where the rotation is located. We're right in this area here. And uh, the movement from the Weather Service... A uh, short time ago, said it was east at 35. So let's move this just a bit. Move it east at 35. So obviously, Eustis, you need to be in your tornado safe spot. They just canceled the tornado warning for Van Zandt County, so that's great yeah. news. Uh, but Pickens looks like 802. Murkison at 819. Brownsboro, 833. Chandler at 847, Noonday at 854. But again, you know, you got Brownsboro, Chandler, Noonday, you're out of the tornado warning. That's if it stays together. Now we got a new scan, so I'm going to pull this box forward a little bit more. So we can see Murkison now at 816, Opelika 824, Brownsboro 
8.30. And again, Chandler and Noonday are outside of the warned area right now. So that's the path. Again, we've, we've had some indications of low-level rotation, but nothing significant at all um, from Gun Barrel City north of Toole. But, uh, you know, as we mentioned, it wasn't anything really to, to be too worried about. But this still is a tornado warning um, that remains in effect for the northern parts of Henderson County until late. So it's still about another 33 minutes. So we'll have to continue to monitor that for you very carefully. So let's put radar back on here and kind of zoom out and see how things have changed. So that one severe thunderstorm warning for Sabine County it looks like the storm is crossing into Louisiana now. That's good news. Go ahead and kind of put this where we are right now. So for those of you that are just kind of curious, where we've got the, the cold front is right in here now, kind of working its way through the northwestern parts of East Texas. We still have the tornado warning for parts of Henderson County. A couple of severe thunderstorm warnings are in there as well. But as this line, and again, the line is really not develop too much further to the south and folks that's good news but still as the whole area moves to the southeast um, we're going to see a lot of this line move through east texas let's just hope that we don't see too much in the way of significant severe but there's certainly you know a possibility that we could you know we could see again more significant strong to severe thunderstorms even an isolated tornado warning or two kind of popping up all right, we've got a severe thunderstorm warning now that's going to pop up here, or it looks like it already has. For parts of Northern Smith, parts of Wood, parts of Upshur, parts of Camp County as well. We're going to see what the Weather Service is saying about this. Severe thunderstorm warning until 845. Um, severe thunderstorm capable of uh, let's see, a, a severe thunderstorm was located near Horde or near Mineola moving east at 55. 60 mile per hour winds and quarter size hail are possible. So let's go ahead and stop this. We'll move it a bit. Moving east at 55. So I bet you're starting to see some strong wind moving into Upshur County now. Moving east at 55. So there we go. Uh, Gilmer, about 814. Um, you know, in New Diana or Diana, you could expect that probably in about let's see, 10, 20, 30 minutes from now. Or City at 829, White Oak at 841, Jefferson at 853. And what we're what I'm just talking about here is that we're looking at an area kind of bowing out from this line here. This could be some very gusty wind. Let's check the National Weather Service, check the radar, see if we're getting any, but well, we're not getting any significant indication here of strong wind, but certainly some strong wind is likely to be uh, coming out of these thunderstorms as they work their way off toward the east at 55. So back to the tornado warning now for Henderson County. We're looking like this, this area of rotation near the Stockard area crossing over 175, could be crossing over 19 here soon. And again, the movement was east at 35. So let's take that east. There's 35. So Merkison at 821. So it's getting closer. Um, the Opelika area at 829, Brownsboro at 835, and Chandler at uh, 849. All right, so we're going to continue to watch all of this and uh, just kind of back out so you can kind of see the warnings that are that are out there right now. All right, so we're going to let uh, Cody Gottschall take over for you here for a few minutes. Um, I'm just going to take a quick break. Cody's got you. 
And trust me, folks, I'll take good care of you. Cody. Thanks, Mark. All right, friends, so this is what we're looking at right now. Um, for whoever's in the booth right now, if you don't mind, could you jump over to Max 2? Um, that's what I've got control over right now. Um, and uh, when you can, if you can just jump in my ear and let me know when, when that's able to happen. But right now, you know, we, we've got this single tornado warning, and that is in effect for Henderson County. That's including areas like in Athens. Um, and let me give you an idea on how long... Uh, that's going on because we're going to focus on this, but we're also going to mention a lot of the other severe weather that we're dealing with um, in East Texas. So for now, we do have that one lone tornado warning, which remains in effect until 830 for Henderson County. And uh, that is including areas like Athens. And we've been mentioning because we're watching the uh, Eustis as well, because that's where that broad rotation is. Um, let's see what we're getting here. Uh, actually, got a report of some damage uh, four miles southeast of Euless. Um, oh, excuse me, you, it's not used to, <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, so uh, let's jump over here with the uh, radial velocity data, and that's going to give you an idea of the, the broad rotation that we're looking at. And, yeah, you can still, it, it's there. We haven't gotten any reports of... Uh, anything too strong in the area, but certainly some stronger winds. So the storm is certainly trying, and it has been trying for quite some time to produce this tornado. We have not gotten any confirmation of any tornado on the ground, but we have seen this broad rotation, and that's what um, you know, this is right here. That green, the red, not exactly very bright on either end of the spectrum, but shows us that there is some sort of broad rotation. Um, and sometimes we can see that quick spin up, but other, a lot of times it does show that the storm is breathing and it makes it a lot easier for those stronger wind gusts to make it down to the surface. And actually, we just this second got a new updated scan and it's looking even more broad. And that's great. The more broad, the better, because that's showing that, for one, that that rotation is really starting to weaken some and uh, could finally see the, uh, the final effects of this thunderstorm before it starts to weaken. We are seeing that cold front that's starting to get a lot closer to these thunderstorms and the interaction of that colder air that's pushing ahead of that front can really kind of choke out these thunderstorms um, and, and really bring down that severe weather threat, which is nice. Um, there's, there's a lot of just action going on in East Texas. We've been talking about the severe weather potential for quite some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump this back over toward our, our standard radar, our high resolution radar, and I just want to show you everything that's going on across East Texas right now. A lot of action going on well ahead of the cold front as well. So here's the actual cold front. Here's those severe thunderstorms that are ahead of that. And we mentioned when you have these lone thunderstorms ahead of the cold front, it carries two things. It carries that greater tornado threat and it can carry that greater hail threat they're not having to share that full environment like what you're going to see, but still a potent line, very heavy rainfall. And a lot of the thunderstorm activity ahead of that front is kind of taking the punch out of some of those thunderstorms as they're uh, moving into Rains County along that front. But there's been a lot of spots that have not been dealing with as much activity uh, throughout this afternoon. So what that means is once the cold front actually gets into that area, well, we're going to be dealing with a better chance for further thunderstorm development. Doesn't mean everyone's going to get rough, severe damage damage, but you could see some stronger winds, some overnight thunder, and that very heavy rainfall. So there's that tornado warning that's in effect for another, I believe, 25 more minutes, and we're going to focus on that in just one more second or so, but as we kind of watch what's going on here with this cold front, heavy, heavy rainfall, a lot of lightning, and you're seeing with these thunderstorms as they go on this past loop there, it's not exactly completely falling apart, but it does not look as impressive as it did about an hour ago. And so what it's doing is, again, we've got that colder air kind of undercutting these thunder start to fall apart though. It's a lot easier for some of those wind gusts to make it back down to the surface with those dying thunderstorms and you can get those stronger wind gusts. Um, a lot of lightning activity, just a big mess going on right now. So let's talk about everything that we're seeing right now, seeing if there's any new information coming from the National Weather Service um, other than uh, what we have so far. So um, Reports of uh, quarter-sized hail, and, and we've seen a lot of hail reports. Uh, these thunderstorms have been able to get quite tall, and that's what's been able to make it at least the size of quarters. But we've also seen several reports of uh, half-dollar-sized hail. And just to our west, near Dallas, that's what was producing that um, golf ball-sized hail or larger. Um, so 
let's see uh let's let's get another look at that tornado warning because that's kind of you know the, the the most important thing that we're focusing on don't think we're ignoring you everywhere else in east texas but I do want to make sure that everyone is aware of what's going on with this uh, uh latest uh scan that we can see what's going on with this tornado warning so again this is until 8.30, and that is currently only for Henderson County. Uh, the circulation should be just off toward the east of um, Eustis. And, and, and again, when we uh, just saw that last scan, it did look weaker, and we're going to hope that the latest scans kind of show the same story, and I, and I believe that they will. So, um, yeah, still looking at the latest scan. A whole, not, not much, very broad, and so far no general reports of anything no no confirmation that that uh rotation reached down to the ground or anything like that and you love to see it we haven't seen any sort of um uh, ground truth we haven't seen any kind of tornado debris through our high resolution products which is nice um but it's still something that we want to make sure that y'all are taking seriously because that means at any point in time this rotation can tighten up a bit and quickly reach down closer to the ground you'll notice that rotation is just off toward the west of highway 19 a pretty busy highway across our western flank of east taxes um and that is what we're looking at uh oh let me get my pointer here uh right here so this is where that broad rotation is and this is traveling off to the east um i believe it was 35 miles per hour so i'm going to clear all this off and i'm going to back this off and actually going to need to zoom out just a little bit more because we want to give you a path and an idea of where this is so yes Merkson, brownsboro this will be moving in your area but actually it's going to be moving there a little bit quicker so um 35. So what we've got right now is this tornadic potential storm, uh, severe thunderstorm for sure, but so far no overall confirmation. But where that broad rotation is, um, that is currently just off toward the east of Eustis, just along and west of Highway 19. So this will be crossing off toward the east about 35 miles per hour. So uh, Murkison, I know you're not included in that, but that's about 15 minutes or so. You see those black lines? That's going to be about every 10 minutes or so. Um, looks like uh, there is a spotter on the storm and uh or maybe not even this storm uh they're talking about some potential lowering their gun, uh, gun barrel so we'll be keeping an idea on that but um yeah brownsboro that'll be 835 um chandler 848 now we're getting outside of the tornado warning of course when we start talking about brownsboro but you get an idea of the storm path these storms they've been cycling and and what that means is they'll become strong they'll become severe they'll develop that larger hail and then they'll sort of weaken a bit, but then they'll quickly re-intensify again. That's how these thunderstorms live for so long. And so if this storm does continue to cycle, because we've been following it for a while now, it's certainly been trying, well, it's going to be in the Brownsboro area with that tornado potential here soon, Chandler. And if it keeps this trend up, then yes, it would be moving into Smith County, into Tyler. This is way out into the future. This is about an hour or so. But this is that quick advanced warning. Hey, if this storm keeps going, you've got about an hour or so until it's on top of you. We're going to be following through it this entire time. But just want to let you know this is something that we've got to keep an eye on over the next well, several minutes, if not hours, if this system continues to do what it does. Um, Mark, have we seen anything from anybody? No, we're not. But this new severe thunderstorm warning that came out for parts of Navarro um, and Ellis County, they're showing some some possible rotation there, as you can kind of see, kind of southwest of Gun Barrel City. So there, there's, there's a couple areas of concern. Yeah. But what I want to make sure that you all understand is that as we've been mentioning, most all of this um, is well into the atmosphere, several thousand feet. But we, we are seeing rotation. And with that rotation, we've got to let you know, uh, you know, pass on the information from the National Weather Service. We've got to let you know what's going on out there. But it looks like that storm over north central Henderson County has crossed over 19 right now and continues to head off toward the east. So just everybody just continue to... You know, do what you know what you need to do so that we can get through this without any significant problems. And as Cody mentioned just a few seconds ago, we have no ground truth to this at this point. But we did see uh, somebody a few minutes ago um, spot a report some lowering of the clouds near Gun Barrel City. Um, he's on 198 heading toward the main lowering, which is uh, off toward the south. So we'll have to see if anything comes about with regard to that. But right now, 
Uh, we have no ground truth that anything is on the ground of either one of these two systems. Yeah, that's good. Um, and we hope it stays that way. Uh, something else important to note, because we are tracking this potential tornado. It is a tornado warning until 830. There are also numerous severe thunderstorm warnings. With more, that will certainly be possible. We, we, we talked about the chances of these tornadoes, which are going to affect a couple people. But these severe thunderstorm warnings and these lines of thunderstorms, they're going to affect a lot more uh, folks. So really what I'd like you to do, if you're on already, make sure that you got your phone on the charger. That's going to be the most important thing. Because when these wind events come through, you got the, the tree debris. You've got the trees. At times, they can come down and knock your power out. You may not have your cable, but you'll have the First Alert weather app and these phones that will be charged. Um, and that way, you'll be able to get that important information until these thunderstorms clear out of your area. Um, we, we do have several other showers uh, and thunderstorms that continue to try to track across our further eastern and southeastern zones. Um, these are some areas that saw some very heavy rainfall a couple hours ago. As we continue into the evening, more rain activity is expected and likely. So I want you all to keep in mind that if you know of any areas that like to flood easy, you might want to avoid them tonight or very early tomorrow morning, if, depending on when you got to hit the road, just because some of these have been you know, quite the super soaker event for some of these thunderstorms and they've been driving a lot of rainfall especially across areas in uh you know far eastern angelina county southern nacogdoches county sabine san augustine counties as well um but uh so far at least for our friends in deep east texas not as much in terms of severe weather you notice the sort of line that's really filling in especially across uh, the red river into southern arkansas north northeast texas as well as areas closer to and then to the east of the dfw metroplex um this is where that cold front is and that cold front is going to start to catch up to these thunderstorms that are out ahead of this action and that's good because that's going to begin to drop down that severe threat but this is what we got right now uh well it looks like a warm front but it gives you an idea of where that thunderstorm is um or where that cold front is it's going to get that uh, that line to kind of a little bit better organized and that's going to allow a lot more folks though to start seeing those stronger severe wind gusts as well another reason to make sure that you keep those phones charged when as much as you can um so we have uh, several severe thunderstorm warnings in effect right now. We did have that one tornado warning for far eastern Van Zandt County. Well, that's now transitioned over to a severe thunderstorm warning, which is included uh, um, wood, upshur, portions of camp, as well as uh, far northern Smith County. And that was because we had uh, the chance for some 60-mile-per-hour wind gusts, as well as that quarter-sized hell. Uh, we also have that severe thunderstorm warning for Henderson and southern Van Zandt County due to the chance for more. Uh, damaging gusty winds, but at times some of those cells are trying to produce some hail upwards the size of ping pong balls and further off toward the west for uh, western uh, portions uh, and southern portions of Kaufman County as well as Henderson County uh, more damaging gusty wind potential plus a size for, uh, chance for some quarter sized hail. So thankfully the hail is nowhere near as prominent nor is it as large as it was when it was near DFW, but still it's severe for a reason. So quarter sized hail is still enough to cause damage your vehicles um obviously now's not the time because it's already on top of you but areas uh like in um you know anderson county southern smith county cherokee county uh, gray county rusk county these thunderstorms are not in your area just yet so if you are concerned about that hail now is your time to make sure that you move your vehicle and you know your severe weather uh, preparations are made so it's been more than enough time. We're going to see if we can get another scan um, with the velocity. It looks like they are continuing that tornado warning. Um, and what the National Weather Service out of Dallas-Fort Worth is currently saying is a severe thunderstorm still capable of producing a tornado was located 8 miles northeast of Athens, moving east at 40 miles per hour. So this thing is really starting to pick up some steam here, probably because of an interaction with that cold front just behind it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to jump back over toward our velocity. Data. So it's going to look a little messier here, but I want to give you a look. So latest scans, still not as pretty, very broad rotation, but this is to, again, the northeast of Athens, so just to the north, northwest of Murkison. Um, let's see here. I'm going to give you, this is 40 miles per hour, so this is going to be moving at a pretty good clip. Pretty quickly, it's going to be moving out of this tornado-warned area. So we're going to jump this over to 40 miles per hour. So something else I want to say here is you're going to notice that these... Um, 
uh, little black lines here. These are little 10 minute intervals. And not only is this gonna be moving outside of the tornado warning area very quickly, because again, 40 miles per hour, that's a fast moving thunderstorm, but it's also gonna be moving out of the severe thunderstorm warning pretty soon too. Now, we start getting to this line here. This is that little area where it goes from the National Weather Service out of Dallas, Fort Worth, and it moves into the Shreveport office. And they're obviously keeping a close eye on it already. That's where you kind of see the baton handoff and we'll, we'll see further uh, warnings issued downstream. What will likely happen is they could have just another large severe thunderstorm warning issued. I'm not gonna speak for them. We'll see what they do when it gets there. But I do wanna say it's gonna be moving here pretty quickly. Likely gonna be moving out of Henderson County within the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes or so. What we have right now is a timeline on when this rotation will be moving in toward these locations. So Merkson, I'd say it'd still be a good idea to be in your tornado safe spot because you've probably got another two, three, maybe four minutes until that circulation is right overhead or at least just to your north. Now this looks gonna, like it's gonna likely follow right along uh, Highway 31, moving into the Chandler area by around 8.45, noonday at 8.52. Now, again, this is noonday, you're not included in any kind of warning right now, but if we continue to see the chance for this broad rotation to continue, if this thunderstorm isn't able to weaken enough because of that cold front interaction, well then uh, that'll be when it'll be over on top of you. So noonday, you got till around 8.52, um, Tyler 9.01. Well, well ahead of time for what we've got, you know, what we're seeing right now. But again, this is your advanced heads up saying we're watching this thunderstorm. If it continues to become severe or traumatic, it'll be overhead at around 901 and then toward White House, that'll be around 908. So this is what we're looking at right now. Broad rotation, no confirmation of anything on the ground, but it's a tornado warning and a tornado warning just that. You're gonna treat it like that. Make sure that you and the kiddos are in your tornado safe spot. So that spot, again, is gonna be that windowless interior room. If you have one, a lot of rooms don't, or a lot of homes don't have that. That just means maybe go to the bathroom or the hallway closet. You and the kiddos have the shoes on, have the baseball or the football helmet or just the hat. Bring the blanket too and place that over you, especially if you've got a room that isn't uh, free of any windows. That'll help you all stay a little safe from any potential kind of glass in case uh, you get any kind of severe wind damage whatsoever. Um, kind of quiet from the National Weather Service, which is good because we're not getting any sort of damage reports, um, but it's still something that we have to keep an eye out on. Um, but uh, that's just kind of what we're doing here. Uh, this screen that's about to pop up is going to be a little messy, but this is a, what we call a correlation coefficient. And what that does is it just looks for anything that isn't rain, anything that isn't hail. Um, usually that's in the form of a little black or blue ball, and we're not seeing that anywhere here within this. So um, something that we like to use as an option to us with our high resolution radars. And if you're not seeing anything, that's awesome. That means that we're not seeing any sort of tornadic debris being lifted up in high into the air. Um, you do see this lone severe thunderstorm doing its best to stay out ahead of that cold front. Um, very heavy rainfall, probably a lot of gusty winds and probably a lot of lightning and thunder is what you're seeing and hearing um, in northern Henderson County. So Merkson, I'm sure it's quite loud every, uh, in your area. Brownsboro, you're probably hearing uh, some of that thunder and seeing some of that rainfall. Probably about to start pick up in intensity here as well too. Um, Backing this up further a little bit more, again, not severe yet, but some heavy rainfall still evident across uh, northern Nacogdoches County, southern Rusk County, as well as uh, Shelby and uh, portions of Panola County. Um, this is not severe. This is just that rain activity that's well out ahead of this cold front and those severe thunderstorms. Um, the, the, the main severe threat that we're really keeping an eye on, and at this point is truly contained to, is just the cold front and these lone thunderstorms that are trying their best to stay ahead of the main line. Now, I know things look messy now, but it's important to remember as well, when we see these lines of thunderstorms developing, it really stops being cut down to a, a county by county warning based system. You'll start to see these sort of wide swaths of severe thunderstorms issued, or at least potentially issued, as well as those special weather statements. So just another uh, you know, friendly reminder, it's really helpful for you to make sure that you know what county that you live in, because that's really what we're about to begin to uh, transition over to, is these, <laughs> these larger areas, because we've already got 
that this one severe thunderstorm warning, that's including four counties. That's uh, portions of Camp, Smith, Wood, and Upshur County. And then when we actually start to see a little bit more activity along the cold front, the very heavy rainfall, those severe thunderstorm winds, as well as the chance for maybe even some of that quarter-sized hail or that pocket change-sized hail, so many things from pennies to dimes to nickels, um, that's what we're going to be looking at, and, and, and that's what we're going to be following. And there's going to be a lot of information that's going to start to come out. I know there's already been a lot, but more will likely begin to, to, to come out here as we've got this cold front that's finally just really starting to move into East Texas. You're going to notice this line of thunderstorms here. Again, this is just from, uh, you know, from uh, Hopkins to Franklin County all the way down toward uh, Henderson County. So this is really just the start of the show here um, in, in terms of that cold front that will begin to move in toward the rest of East Texas. So uh, you might think, well, it's been a kind of quiet here in Jacksonville or, uh, you know, in, in southern Morris County. Well, there's just not been as much forcing near you. You're going to get those thunderstorms later on. It's just going to take a couple more hours. Um, that's actually something that we can do here while we wait on another scan here for our radio velocity. Actually, it looks like we just potentially got a new update to that tornado warning, and we sure certainly did. Um, so let's give you an idea of what the uh, National Weather Service says here. Um, uh, severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near Brownsboro, or 11 miles northeast of Athens, uh, moving east at uh, 40 miles per hour. So, uh, no new information. Um, no confirmation whatsoever, and this is going to, because we did mention that that tornado, or the potential tornado, that broad rotation, was pretty quickly going to be moving out of that old tornado warning box. This is going to be a little bit more in line with that path that I showed you just about five minutes or so. So uh, before we show you future casts and give you a better idea of where these thunderstorms will be moving later on this evening, let's give you another look at um, wh where that rotation is which is still, again, very broad, whether you're looking through Shreveport or um, Dallas-Fort Worth, but it's still there for sure. Um, let's jump it right here and give you another path. So, again, 40 miles per hour. So I'm actually, because I know I'm going to have to back out just so we can get 40 miles an hour moving off toward the east. And, again, this is going to include the city of Tyler if this tornado warning continues and goes in toward the National Weather Service at a Shreveport's office. I'm actually going to jump over there and see if they're looking like they're going to issue anything. So far, they haven't mentioned the, continuing this tornado warning, but that's something that I'll keep an eye out on. Um, so with the latest scan, with the latest tornado warning box issued, um, Brownsboro, that's going to be around um, 834. So you got about 11 minutes until this circulation is right overhead. And actually, I think think we just got another scan here and this is good because it's even messier it's it's not even showing you as much greens remember when you see the yellow or the reds and the greens together that's indicative of at least some broad rotation but friends at least looking at this right now i'm not even seeing any of that and and that's that's fantastic news let's hope that that trend does continue because that is you know something that we like to see we like to see these weakening tornadic storms um but uh See if I can see any kind of potential information from uh, either chat with the National Weather Service. So far, nothing. So again, all we've heard in terms of reports for this lone tornado warned storm is just some pretty gusty winds, and that was when it was moving um, through the uh, Eustis area, um, and that was it. So still gusty winds, still severe weather, still severe storm for sure, um, but it just has that low end chance that it could at any point in time produce that tornado, and that's just not what we're seeing right now. If anything, we're seeing the chance of that tornado being produced even lower. I still want to make sure that y'all are being safe. Y'all are taking the tornado warning for what it is and being safe and going into that tornado safe room which is that windowless interior room or that interior hallway, the closet, the bathroom, um, some of those more structurally sound areas. Um, I, I will say, too, this also included southern and southeastern Van Zandt County to include um, the uh, town of Edom. Uh, this... It looks like the rotation, if it continues the way that it is, will go just to the south of you, but it still will be quite close. So if you are in Edom, it's also a good idea for you to take that uh, tornado warning seriously and make sure that you do your best to uh, just, just stay put for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. So 
Um, that, that there's your reminder there as well. Um, so that's what we've got going on with the torn, uh, with the tornado warning. I'm going to clear all this off. I'm going to jump back over to our higher resolution radar and show you everything that's going on in East Texas, and then we're going to take a quick look at future casts to give you an idea while we wait on a new scan. Because if the next scan shows a whole lot of nothing like we just did there, well, they might even be uh, able to either let that tornado warning expire or maybe even cancel it if the storm itself truly is beginning to fall apart. But you notice that cold front is bearing down on it very, very quickly, and the interaction with that front is going to begin to really just shut that down pretty quickly. Um, so well out ahead of that cold front, you do have those heavy thunderstorms uh, that are developing in central northern Nacogdoches as well as southeastern Rusk, Shelby County too, but you notice all that action. You're actually starting to see a lot more lightning beginning to develop as that cold front begins to get a little bit better ground in farther northwestern uh, uh, East Texas. So this includes Henderson County as well as Kaufman County, Van Zandt County, uh, now northern Smith County, Wood County, uh, Franklin, Titus Camp County too, and even now into Upshur County as well. A lot of lightning activity, very heavy rainfall. These are severe thunderstorms in a lot of these areas, so that means that there is the chance that you're going to see some of these severe wind gusts making it down to the ground. Another important reminder to make sure that you're keeping those phones charged because if you know the tree or the tree limb or whatever messes with that power line and you lose power, at least you'll have the phone, at least you'll still have that first alert weather app, and that's where we are right now. Streaming live, you're getting all that information. Um, so that, that's what we've got going on right now. Uh, yeah, Cody, I'm also, also noticing that um, you were talking about multiple counties coming out with, with severe thunderstorm warnings with this line coming through, and you just kind of saw an idea of that just happening. Um, well, now the Weather Service is talking about they're watching, uh, keeping a close eye on that cell west of Smith County. Tornado warning was reissued by Fort Worth. Rotation appears broad at this time. We'll keep a close eye as it gets closer to the Smith County line. So that's good news. We know that the National Weather Service in Shreveport is now watching uh, what's going on um, from the Fort Worth office. But as you can see here, it is really almost impossible to see any type of rotation going on out there right now, Cody. It's just... Yeah. It's getting really kind of mushy. <laughs> There's just no better way to put it. It's hard to see, even using Fort Polk, which is obviously much farther away, uh, not really seeing too much with regard to rotation now in, uh, in this tornado warning that is in effect for parts of uh, Henderson and southeastern Van Zandt County. So that's, I mean, that's great news that that is the case. That's what we're seeing now. But you, know, you get one or two more scans and things could spin back up again. But right now, let's keep our fingers crossed that that doesn't happen. So the warnings that we have out there right now, um, a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings. We're going to look at one. This is the one Cody said, you know, multiple counties coming out. Northern Smith, parts of Wood Upshur and Camp until 845. So that's about another 15 minutes or so. Those storms continue to move quickly off toward the east at about 55 miles per hour. So Gilmer just kind of moved into your area, Betty, or City, New Diana, looking for places like that to be seeing those winds to really start picking up. The newest warning that came out just a few moments ago is for parts of Anderson, Henderson, and um, we've also got Navarro and Freestone counties, but that is indicating that storms there are moving to the southeast at 40 miles per hour. So we're starting to see more of the influence on, on the cold front with the movement to the southeast rather than seeing the storms themselves that are moving, excuse me, sorry, I didn't mean to do that, that are moving more to the east, like what these storms are out ahead of the cold front. They're moving east, but the line along the front, they are moving off toward the southeast. So once we start seeing that movement more from east to southeast, we're really starting to see the influence of the cold front, and uh, that's that appears to be the case right now. Now, what we're hoping for here at this point is that that tornado warning will be the last tornado warning that we've got out here. It'll, it'll expire at 9 o'clock unless the system, unless the Weather Service makes the decision to, to cancel them early. 
Um, let's see. We're still watching to see what they've got going on. But unless they cancel them early, we can get you back to regular programming. But right now, we're going to stay with this because, again, we do have a tornado warning in effect for parts of Henderson Van Zandt that could be moving into the most populous county in East Texas, which would be Smith. So that's one of the reasons why we're going to, we're going to hang on to this one as long as we possibly can, trying to see if, boy, I'm just, I'm really not seeing anything at all. I, I'm, I'm not either. We, we went from really broad rotation on one scan to nothing, and that's what we're seeing right now. Um, so really hoping when that next game comes in, that, that trend continues. Because I would love for this just to completely drop out, because, I mean, that front is just really catching up it's quite quickly. <laughs> it is. And that, <laughs> excuse me, that could be a... a uh, a wind maker too. Once that front gets, you really oh, yeah. start to see the the winds make it, you know, really start to pick up. So right now, just not seeing anything in that tornado warned area right now. Looking at the uh, the latest high resolution radar right now, that that gives you kind of a an indication of where the the most the strongest part of the storm would be located near Brownsboro, south of Edom, west of Chandler and east of the Murkison area, that would be the strongest part of the storm right now. But then you kind of look underneath it, and it's just very difficult to see any type of even broad rotation right now. It looks like this might just be turning into um, a wind event right now. But we do have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings that are in effect for parts of northern Smith, parts of uh, Wood, Upshur, and, and uh, Camp County. And that one will be in effect, I believe, until 845. Yes, that is the case. And the newest one that just came out for parts of Henderson and Anderson County until 930. So that's uh, showing you storms there moving off toward the southeast at 40 miles per hour. So if we kind of zoom in on that real quick, moving southeast at 40. Going to get right along that front edge there. So southeast at 40. There we go. Crossroads at 839, Cayuga at 848, Frankston at 904, the CUNY area at 911, and Jacksonville at 926. So, this uh, again, this is the cold front now. This isn't the storms that have formed out ahead of the cold front, but this actually is the cold front. You can see um, all of the uh, uh, tornado watches that have been dropped for the northwestern parts of East Texas. Well, those actually expired at 8 o'clock, but that's also good news to kind of see how things are starting to slowly improve over northwestern counties. But we'll continue to follow all of this and that uh, that tornado warning still in effect for parts of southeastern Van Zandt and the northeastern sections of Henderson County, and that stays in effect until 9 o'clock. And that's still another 26 minutes. See, once again, if we can't find some rotation in this. I just I don't see it. No, so. I actually put it on a, on on mine. I did a 45 minute loop, and you can see the last two to three scans, and it, it really looks like that rotation's falling apart. And the fact that we're not even seeing it from Shreveport in, which is even higher up in the atmosphere, that's I think that's another good idea uh, that yeah. this thing is totally just falling apart. It really is, and that's good news for Smith County residents for sure. But you know, I, I would certainly think that. The gusty wind from these thunderstorms um, could be an issue and will likely be an issue in many locations. And um, kind of thinking about asking a quick question here in the chat. So just kind of kind of watch how things are, are progressing here. Things are kind of moving off toward the east and southeast. Um, and let's just give this a second here. Yeah, while Mark's doing that, um, they did just issue a downstream severe thunderstorm warning for Smith County um, due to the chance of those 60 mile per hour severe wind gusts, as well as the chance that some hail size could reach the size of uh, quarters. Um, so that's what the National Weather Service out of Shreveport has issued for pretty much the entirety of Smith County. And this would include that this, uh, this storm that is currently tornado warned uh, once it begins to move in toward uh, the Smith County area. But we're, we're going to see if they continue that tornado warning for their area or not. But 
uh, at least at this point in time, Smith County is only under that severe thunderstorm warning. Still, though, for, especially for friends in Tyler or, or really just anywhere that's right along um, Highway 31, if you live anywhere between Brownsboro and Tyler, like areas in Chandler, it'd be a really good idea for you to still keep a very close eye on the system as it's still technically severe uh, and tornado warned uh, for northern Henderson County. Yeah, we just got uh, some information here up near the Betty area. Somebody who has a good rain gauge, good electronic rain gauge, said that he's getting a 4.47 inch per hour rainfall rate. Oh my goodness. So you know in Betty right now it is raining hard, but the good news is maybe that'll start to uh, lighten up here soon. Also got some information here that Harrison County just got um, a call from a tree and power line on Sequoia, and that uh, that happened just about five minutes ago, so we've got some some trees going down in some places in Harrison County. Um, so let me see, Peace Eyes Hail in the city of Gilmer being reported. So we still have severe weather to, to talk about here. And yeah, there's a little bit of hail. You can kind of see it moving right into yeah areas just kind of south and west of Gilmer. Um, let's see. Okay, we're getting some, some good news here. The, the National Weather Service is indicating that the cold front is starting to um, what's called undercut the, uh, the storms that are out ahead of the cold front. So what that'll do is that'll really kind of keep strong winds as the primary threat, not ruling out the possibility, you know, you can get an isolated tornado, but it really takes the tornado threat out of this line of storms, or the, the storms mm -hmm. out ahead of the line once we get that happening, because the cold front is moving faster than the storms out ahead. So still waiting to see what they... Um, all right, so I asked the National Weather Service if they were going to think about dropping the, the henderson Vanza County tornado warning. Said not immediately, but the rotation in that cell has weakened a bit in the past five to ten minutes. We would like to see that trend continue first. Well, I think we all would like to see that happen first, see that trend continue. So let's see if we can see um, any additional spin-ups, any additional rotation. I just don't see it, and I think that's good news. I really think this is good news for, for Smith County residents, even though, as Cody mentioned, that severe thunderstorm warning popped up until 930. Strong storms expected to continue to move through the Smith County area. And that warning again kind of popped up just kind of in response to that cell with that uh, possible tornado in uh, parts of Henderson and Van Zandt County. But it's brought some, brought some very heavy rain, lots of lightning now. And this is actually, I believe, uh, we've got the, the cold front that's kind of working its way through Van Zandt County and Henderson County right now. So that's good news that we're starting to see it really catch up with what's going on out there right now. So I think we've got we've got the cold front kind of already splitting its way through that part of East Texas. And as it continues to move off toward the south and east, that really takes the severe weather threat out of areas like Canton. I mean, you might be still seeing some lightning and uh, hearing some thunder and maybe still some moderate rain in your area. But the good news... Well, look at that cold front. It's so, it's so easy to see. Oh, and it filled in right really quickly, filled too. filled in very, very fast. So that's where the cold front is right now. You know, you give it, you know, it's moving toward the southeast at, let's just say, 45 miles per hour. So you go about 45 miles, and you can see how far that front is going to be in just an hour's time. That's going to clear a lot of locations from the potential for any severe weather. And that's, that's great. You know, you get it about five, six hours from now, and it looks like it should be through the majority of all of East Texas, So, which would be just absolutely awesome news. So still, that tornado warning for northeastern Henderson, southeastern Van Zandt County continues. Um, National Weather Service said a few moments ago that they were going to keep it um, until they saw more scans and were convinced that we didn't have any rotation in there. And um, it, let's hope that the Weather Service in Shreveport 
um, sees the same and hopefully will not issue this downstream. And I think a lot, <clears throat> seeing this severe thunderstorm warning had a lot to do with it. I think that they put this up for now just to see what happens. But uh, severe thunderstorm warning kind of still, still in effect. You can see uh, kind of the front edge of these storms kind of working their way across Chandler and should be moving into um, east or moving into Smith County from northwest to southeast as the uh, the cold front starts to take over. So rather than the storms moving through like they were a while ago, they were kind of, you know, these storms here will be kind of moving more um, in the direction off toward the southeast rather than the east is what they're doing now. So that'll, that'll be a good indication that the cold front has taken over the storms that have developed and that we've been following for a good part of this evening um, across parts of East Texas. So looking to see if we're seeing anything. It says the National Weather Service is talking about the supercell cluster starting to congeal into a linear complex along the cold front. And uh, for the time being, the, the, complex, the complex across Texas continues to be um, ahead of the boundary. And that's good news because, again, once that cold air undercuts these storms that are out ahead of it, we're going to be in much better shape, I think. I still think strong wind and the possibility of some hail, but I think the tornado risk will go down. Let's see if we're looking at um, any hail or anything down in, in parts of deep east Texas. No, it doesn't look like we've, folks, it doesn't really look like we've got much hail at all. So even that risk of hail may be uh, diminishing here pretty quickly. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We are going to take you back to regular programming here. Even though we have this tornado warning still in effect, we're seeing absolutely no rotation at all, and I believe that that will be the case for a while. If anything additional does happen, we will get you back. Uh, we'll, we'll come back and we'll let you know what's going on. But for the most part, what we're seeing right now is that uh, the cold front is catching up with these storms, and as far as anything uh, significant, as far as tornadic development over the next hour or so looks pretty small, but if it does happen, we'll let you know. We'll break into programming, but just to kind of verify what we've got going on right now, severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Smith, Wood, Upshur, and Camp until 845, for parts of Smith County until 930, for parts of uh, Henderson and Anderson County until 930 as these storms continue to move through East Texas. We'll stay with them. We'll watch them. If there's any reason to uh, interject our faces back into your home, we'll do it. But for now, we're going to get you back to regular programming. Folks, have a great evening, and thanks for hanging around with us here tonight.